if you've never spoken to one before, break that wall and see their humanness and their sacrifice. If you are a birth mother, first mother, your voice matters. Please share your story with us. You are not alone, and we care. And everyone, gently take risks within yourself and see the humanness in all of us without judgment. Because when suffering leads to meanings that unlock the mysteries in our lives, we do strengthen our compassion, our empathy, our gratitude, our joy, and our wisdom. And that is what the whole purpose of this is. I started a Dapsalon support group in June 2012, no, 2010. And look around you, this is what it's culminated to. I kept every email, every name, kept people to connected because I wanted to create a community of connection in the foster care and adoption community. Because I felt as an adult adoptee, where do I have to turn? I'm an adult now, I'm not a kid anymore. So look around, this is what it's become. We have nine support groups now running in South Los Angeles. There's a um, sheet in your goodie bag listing all of those support groups. And Celia Center would not be here without the woman who gave birth to me. And that's Celia Barbosa. And I'm Thierry because she was born on December 2nd, 1932, and passed away by natural causes on August 27, 2014, in a hospital in Argentina. It's very new for me, and apropos that I'm doing this conference today. <laughs> Who needs a session? Me. <laughs> so I'm dedicating this conference to her, because this would not be happening without her. So I thank her for giving me the life to do what I get to do. And I thank her for the tenacity to dance through it and show up with poise. She was a dancer. And the love that she put in my heart to give to you all. Thank God for the family in Long Island who finally adopted me and showed me the way, how to be silly and never grow up. <laughs> <laughs> this was actually our photo adoption announcement that said, Ron, Diane, and Jeanette have decided to become mommy, daddy, and dog at the age of seven and a half. So yeah, there are tissues in your goodie bag. And did I say chocolate? <laughs> so, at our closing ceremonies, we are going to have a full-blooded Navajo Indian healer who's going to come and give us words of wisdom and play the beautiful Native American flute. That's at six o'clock. And I know some of you are super excited. We are gonna have wolf dogs here at six o'clock as well to give us healing and energy. Because I wanted, this conference is about healing. We're never gonna be cured. It's about healing, processing, moving through, and walking away <coughs> feeling transformed and moved. And that's what I want. So now, without further ado, we do have a wonderful guest speaker today. I'm so honored she's here. She has a very busy schedule, and I had to fit her in this morning. She's rushing on a plane to go speak at another location across the country. So, she was born in Morgantown, West Virginia, to an African father and a white mother. As an infant, she was placed in foster care and adopted by a loving white family in West Virginia. She grew up contemplating and dealing with questions about her identity and her biracial roots. She fell in love with theater in early childhood and later won an acting scholarship to attend West Virginia University. She earned her MFA at the American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco and 
has joined the Los Angeles acting community. So if anyone has any jobs, just talk to her. <laughs> she has been acting on stage as well as in films and TV. She's been on Strong Medicine, All of Us, Boston Legal, The Secret Life of the American Teenager, and the film American Dreams. She also dances with a professional company, Urban Latin Dance Theater. However, her biggest role so far, what's important today, is when she decided to locate her biological parents. And so I welcome Sarah Culberson here to the podium today to share with us her story of self-discovery from West Virginia to West Africa. 